What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Erica, from the Classy Climb blog. Drop that city and state in the chat if you can hear me. And uh, welcome. I know it's a little later than our usual show, but I had to do this one from various calls today and different things I was doing. Um, imposter syndrome. I get this question a lot, like, what do you do when you feel like an imposter? And I usually go, keep keep going, right? Or I tell you two, two things I usually tell a lot of you guys on here is, Take out a sheet of paper and write from high school to now all the things you've accomplished. By the time you're on paper two or three, you'll start to go, you know, you'll start to have an adjustment. Because a lot of times I feel like a lot of people are suffering from several factors. Now, I'm not going to go all woo-woo saw here because I am tying this into business and why this matters. Uh, but I watched early Ellie Talks and Todd Millie. I shared it in the community page. I asked y'all to drop a classy climb over there. I see 140 of y'all went over there because the video had four views before I sent y'all. So stop tripping. Drop a classy climb when you see videos I recommend. Be nice to people. Doesn't hurt you. Doesn't doesn't stop you from doing anything. Something Tim Jackson and a few other people told me is people love getting something from you, but then won't give you credit for it. And you have to like literally eat that and just live with it. I have so many people pull me aside and go, girl, yeah, tell me about this thing. Man, I knew that. Well, yeah, I got that from you. Or, oh, yeah, Erica told me this thing about YouTube. And people won't give you your shine. They'll give another man shine. It is what it is. They don't give women shine like that always. But I want you to understand, like, I've had many people be like, let me give you your flowers now because you've done the work. And I'm like, thank you. You know what I mean? So I want you to understand that when I do these conversations, I do them because I want you to understand what is making you place yourself low? This is just something I want you to start asking yourself. What makes you place yourself low? What makes you um, not want to stick your head out? Right? It's one of those things. So again, here we go ahead and show the article I want to show. My friends are like, where are you at? We're doing dinner. Not right now. Okay. Here is the first article. Types of imposter syndrome. OK, superhero overwork themselves to make up for how inadequate they feel. See, there's a lot of people out there like I'm a super mom. I'm a super this. I'm a, and I'm like, just be a mom. Just be a working mom and keep working. OK, natural genius set. You guys just going to go there. Set exceedingly high goals, feel crushed when they don't meet them. When you are a above intellectual person. The, the bar your family sits, the bar teachers sit on you is so ridiculous, right? Once I got tested at a certain grade level, it was like, oh, well, you should be doing A's every day of the week and all year long. And I failed a calculus class, and they were like, that's just so unlike you. I was like, this teacher sucks. They were like, nah, it's you. So when I went to college, I'm taking college calculus and pass it with flying colors. And I go, excuse me. And I was that petty person that when I saw <laughs> that uh, that teacher, I was like, hey, man, I went to college and passed calculus with an A. And everybody was like, I can't believe you told her that. I so said, good. I'll tell you right now in the Harris Teeter grocery store, I'm that petty. But there is a weight when you're naturally a very smart person. Uh, there's a book Aaron Cleary has called The Curse of the High IQ. Y you notice it when you go places. Just we talk about it every day. Like some we like, man, somebody elevator don't go all the way up. Or common sense ain't common no more, right? Because people say some goofy stuff and you're like, where did that come from? So anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Expert, never satisfied with their level of understanding, always trying to learn more. There is a person who this fits this category. I know we're supposed to focus on ourselves, but and this person, no matter what they do, oh, I need more data. I went out and got my own data. I went and did this and that. And I'm like, boo, there are people, there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. Every business owner in every business, almost everyone except for crypto, but I still, you'll get where I'm going on this. Everything about business is the same. One, two, three. Where can people buy stuff from you? How will people know about you? What's the follow up? That is one, two, three of business. You ever see the Gary, v, the Gary movie where it's like, always be closing? We've seen that play over and over again. So when someone says, oh, you know, uh, no one can help me. I'm just so smart. No one can help me. I'm the smartest person ever. And, and there's nobody with answers that I need. That's a clear flag, bro. That's a flag on the play immediately. Like get away from that person. Something's off about them in many ways. 
Perfectionists, never completely happy with their work, fixated on flaws instead of strengths. I see so many people, and I know a person like this. She has a beautiful Instagram. Beautiful. Don't get no traction. None. Nobody cares. There's something in us. There's something's too perfect. We don't like it. So my Instagram all over the place. I'm throwing up silly stuff. I'm laughing. I'm putting business stuff. Then I'm laughing some more. I never post a lot of booty stuff. Never, never do that. Used to post a lot of fitness four years ago before the surgery. And I'm telling you, like, when you have it, a mixture, people are more engaged. And when I don't post, I had several people be like, hey, are you okay? Hey, you all right? I haven't seen you post in a while. And I took a, I took a whole 60 days off Instagram and nobody noticed. <laughs> well, it took more like 45 days. But it was funny because it even like Todd and this might be like, hey, I haven't noticed you haven't been posting. You okay? I don't make it perfect. I just sitting out there. Ryan Stuman out of Apex Entourage in Dallas literally posts something every day. He just challenges himself to do it. And so when you get in these perfectionist spirals, it, it ain't going to work. Nothing you put out today will be perfect. In two years, you'll want to change it. Ask anybody who's wrote a book. They want to go back and change the book. That's how you get volume two, three, and four, right? And so a lot of times what people are doing is they're doing perfectionist stuff. They never get ahead because they never put anything out. They're still afraid it don't look right. Soloists prefer to work alone, won't ask for help for fear of appearing weak or incompetent. These, these are all dangerous Okay, imposter syndrome and social anxiety disorder issues. These are things you guys got to work on, right? There's a lot of people running around the internet. I'm a lone wolf. I'm a lone wolf. <laughs> That's not even the definition, right? Like the animal kingdom, they don't, there is no lone wolf. You die. <laughs> you either fight your way back into another pack or you die. And if you actually look at our human society, why are we having this increase of suicides and issues and problems with a lot of men? The number went through the roof in 2020 isolated, lone wolf. They're not going to work. They're at home by themselves. Every animal clinic in the Southeast was like emptied of dogs and pets when people were forced to go into the house. That should show you something. Just the level of what people are not tapping into a community or building their own community Right. Because if you if you really got eyes and you're really paying attention, I've been slowly dripping it, y'all dripping it like this, that sales in people's social media businesses are dropping. And it's because of the STEMI money. I watched that video today. I said, see, I know I'm not the only one. I'm not not just my business, but I'm going to conferences and I'm like, y'all making that up. Or I'm just listening to other people in the business space who basically their students are in two places. They need more. They need more now to believe into the product. They need more, right? You saw how I did the videos for the twenty-seven dollar product, and people left comments like, "Ooh, I usually don't spend more than twenty-five bucks, but this was a good twenty-five dollars, twenty-seven dollars." And I go, "Oh my god, like you need to get off the internet. Like you spend twenty-five dollars in lottery tickets. You probably spend twenty-five dollars in liquor in a weekend. You spend twenty-five dollars doing anything." If you thought, man, it had it had to over deliver for me to purchase it, that's a that's already a, a, a scarcity mentality. It ain't gonna work for you. So you have those two categories of people. You gotta oversell it for them to buy it, and then you got this other category of people who are actually implementing it. If you look at some of the people, I'm just naming a group, no in particular reason. Uh, mobile home elite buying trailer parks, and their students with results are buying trailer parks with them. That's the natural development of communities and groups is we're going to meet more in person. We're going to do projects together. We're going to keep it vibing. So that's what you're seeing a pivot to a lot of people that build a social brand. Well, now all this year, if you pay attention to some of these girls, they're speaking at every conference every weekend. Why? There's a power in other people's stages, right? Two, it builds up your portfolio of speaking. Three, <laughs> speakers get paid anywhere from two grand to five grand. And there's some people get paid 50. Rebecca Lynn Pope was 20 before this TV show. Now I'm pretty sure it's up some more. Because trust me, your girl tried to go find out for a, con for a conference, right? Um, and I remember sharing this conference idea with some people. And they were like, mm, I don't know. And we get really into this moment of they want to see a person, uh, that looks a particular way. Let's just go there, right? Um, 
there's a lot of people out here selling you courses and businesses and lifestyle that you should never want their personal lifestyle. Never. A Gary Vee, when he explained his life multiple times and he takes one month off to give like actual attention to his kids. And he's lucky because he married a girl whose father was also like a corporate America CEO that worked all the time. And that's just their life. You know, no, wouldn't want that. Right. Um, there's several other people I'm trying to think, be careful without naming people. There's several people when you see their personal life, I wouldn't want your life whatsoever. Your kids don't speak to you. Your family don't speak to you. Nobody deals with you. I don't want your life. Like, that's a terrible life. <laughs> right? And so what we're doing is we're glamorizing lifestyle. Right? And this is what people kept saying. Well, why are these influencers showing cars and jewelry? Because they have to. Like, literally, they have to. And it's not just a black people thing. It's also a white people thing. Grant Cardone was straight-laced, boring, nice sales dude trying to get you to sell cars for like 30 plus years, I'd say for 25. It wasn't until he started putting on this persona and you even saw other people in the marketing say, say, look at him put on this persona of an a-hole basically, a rich a-hole and it blew up the 10X is born, right? So even in other cultures, you have to have this lifestyle depiction that people are like, oh, I would love that. So I'm gonna do the thing that they do so I can have it. That's not how this works. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's literally people who were so, did this got happened to them. Their hand got smacked that they came back out months later like, oh, no, I have family and friends and a girlfriend. And look, I'm doing well. Look, I'm, I, have, I know people. I'm not a psychopath. Because anybody who watched any kind of video would be like, no, dude, you're a psycho. You're a psycho. There's other people who literally, uh, I, I'm not trying to diss Angry Man, but Angry Man, was, some dude was talking about women and red pill and this and that. And he's like, y'all just want to be alone. Everybody don't want to live alone. I want a woman. And it started busting out laughing because that's just a human reaction to like you're putting on a character. Yeah, leave these women alone. Don't bother these women. Don't do that. Nah, man, I want to be with these women. Right. You know what I mean? You're putting on a character. And so my whole point of doing this video is I want y'all to be able to be yourself, whatever business you want to create, but also be better and let go of like the over the superhero stuff, the overdoing stuff. It, let that shit go. Let that shit go. It's simply imposter syndrome refers to internal experience of believing that you are not as competent as others perceive you to be. <clears throat> now, while people like to narrow it down to intelligence and achievement, keywords, that was the old definition. It has links to perfectionism and social context, okay? So it, people feel like they're phony. They don't, they don't belong where they are. Um, they got there during dumb luck. I never, when people say, oh, you got lucky. No, I worked. I really quickly, like, there's no such thing as that. Like, oh, you just got lucky. No, you're not going to insult me that way. Or anytime my mom or somebody in my family goes, well, y'all should try YouTube. Erica does YouTube. I said, no, no, honey, I do it for real. Everybody else out here is playing. Like, we're not the same, okay? And don't compare me. <laughs> so, again, this talks about, you know, where it came from. But, again, berating your performance and inability, inability to realistically assess your competence and skills, attributing your success to external factors. Again, if these women would act right, I would act right. If these men would act right, I would act right. If this white man does this, I'll do this. If the job does this, I'll do this. That's, I can't do that. Be rating your performance. Fear that you won't live up to expectations. According to whom? This is something I wish I could put on a shirt all the time. According to whom? Well, Erica, you know, uh, business owners don't have to worry about sales slumping. Um, they could just have more prestigious um, photos and reviews and more reviews. You, everybody needs more video reviews to see if it's worth buying. If you need a hundred video reviews to put in $27, I, I don't want you as a client. You're not who I'm trying to help because you're almost in the abandonment category, right? You're almost at the like, you're looking for a lottery ticket jump. That's not what this channel's about. It's about increasing your income, actually doing the work, inner work, OK, and actually going forward. That's why I'm always saying, get a sheet of paper, write out all your accomplishments. Then on a second sheet of paper, what do you want to accomplish in the next five to 10 years? Because once you put some timelines on it, it's real. It's not a dream anymore. 
right? When people say, how's your little business going? It's doing well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like people have to really beat down the self-doubt by actually doing. And why do you want to do this? According to who you're not qualified? Who came and told you you weren't qualified? That's up here. Now, here's some other ones. Overachieving, sabotage your own success, self-doubt, okay? Setting up very challenging goals and feeling defeated when they fall short. Like when you, I, there's a couple of my friends, oh yeah, I'm gonna lose 30 pounds in the next 30 days. I'm gonna do this. I'm like, baby, you're not doing that. You'd have to get up and run 15 miles a damn day for the next 30 days without break in order to do that. <laughs> so stop. Because then you get there and you're like, oh, I could, I didn't meet my goals. Well, shit, nobody can. I ain't seen many people lose 30 pounds in 30 days unless they were a wrestler on The Biggest Loser. Adjust that shit. That's crazy. Sabotaging your own success. This is something, when people say someone's having a midlife crisis, this is what they mean, right? Um, I knew a family, family friends, great family. They were like the picturesque military dream family, four kids, all looking like the dad, everybody's smiling, happy. You know, he's getting ready to retire and he has a oopsie baby. And it's like, and he will even say in some words, like, I don't know why I did it. I just, I just did it. I don't even have a good reason. And in my mind, I go, this dude's like the epitome of like a colon pal and that we know, right? And you're like, you, you sabotaged yourself. Like that's literally... And in and, and so many words, that's what I think. You sabotage yourself. Like things were too perfect, too boring, too steady. People do that to themselves. It's a real thing, okay? So, you know, we've talked about the problem. We've talked about what it looks like. You know, how do you fight this? And, and my biggest thing I really want you to understand is it's a vicious cycle, right? It, it You know, it says even here in, in certain part, you have to identify, okay? So this is, I'm going to kind of read here. I took my glasses off, sorry. Do you analyze, oh, I hate these words. <laughs> Do you agonize over even the smallest mistakes or flaws in your work? Question one. Question two, do you attribute your success to luck or outside factors? Listen to me. When I hear girls say, it's just because I'm young or I'm pretty or I'm this or I'm just this, I'm like, no, it's you. It's not that you got the young booby booty, the booty, you know, like some of the people buying your courses and products are not men, they're women. You know what I mean? So you're contributing luck. It's ridiculous. Number three, are you very sensitive or even to even constructive criticism? Um, this is something I used to be very sensitive on because I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. No. <laughs> well, but and what you have to understand is I don't take criticism from anybody who's not doing it at this level. That's what I've learned, right? When I had my coffee shop across from the historical black college, black people came in there all the time. Like, well, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. I'm like, oh, you own a coffee shop? No. Oh, but that's what I need to do. Okay. Okay. Right? <laughs> right? If I talk to somebody, you know, there's a family member I have that she's, you know, our family members are mostly really super in shape. Most of them are like jogging and in their late 60s, like running and doing crazy stuff because they're former military. I have a family member that's bad health, smokes all the time two knee surgery replacements and she every time she got some kind of health thing she want to tell you about you'd be like baby i'm good <laughs> so it's like it depends on who the construction care system is coming from you can hear it and eat the meat spit out the bones but i'm not listening like a lot of times when it came to trucking or different stuff like that i would talk to people who were really doing it in the industry and somebody would be like my uncle jerome who used to drive trucks for six months said this 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 i'm like your uncle's not even qualified to talk on none of it he did that in 1972. Like, I don't want to hear that. Get on out here with that. So, yes, there's been moments when I've been very sensitive to construction there. Do you feel like you will inevitably be found out as a phony? This is crazy, y'all. Like, most of y'all are teaching courses on, like, I've seen people do coaching very well. I've seen people do um, organization, um, the girls that help you do the templates and all that stuff, businesses. You're doing the business. You're doing the business. That's like, how do you defeat feelings of being phony? Like, do the business. Do you downplay your own expertise even when, even in areas when you are genuinely more skilled than others? I've had to do this because just the men, how men work in a room sometimes, you have to do this occasionally. But I remember I was talking about 
like all this stuff I was doing. And you could tell the group of people I was with didn't care. This one girl, she was dating this guy. They weren't serious. He, he leaned over. He was like, listen, I think that's amazing. I really love what you're doing. That's awesome. Like, I'm really like proud of you. I don't even know you. And I was just like, okay, baby, first of all, are you dirty macking right now with your girl right here? But two, I was like, thank you. Because the current, that group of friends I had at the time, I don't really have no more. Um, it was like, why is she bragging? And you have to pay attention to like, are you bragging or is it the people you're with? Right. So don't downplay. And a lot of people do that. Okay, so of course they say, you know, there's reasons, family upbringing, low self-efficiency, you know, all this stuff. Um, you can go a woo-woo on that. I ain't going to go too deep over there. But again, psychology today, same thing, understanding it. Where is it coming from, right? 25 to 30% of high achievers may suffer from imposter syndrome. Around 70% of adults experience one, imposter syndrome once in their life. Okay, so, girl, they keep text messaging me. Okay, I'm good. Okay, I see. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me see the other one. I know I have one more. Okay, five different types of imposter syndrome. I think we. it's going to be the same as the other ones. Mm, okay, but I'll go over them. Hold on, let me check y'all comments. You know, I got my glasses on right now, so I'm struggling, struggling to read. The Renaissance, I did thought he was dirty macking for a little bit. And, and they broke up not that long after that. I was about to be like, okay, now, you six foot three. Now, you good looking, but I feel like you was dirty macking. Black folks are so critical of each other. John, tell them white folks too. Listen, I went to schools with white kids. They be mad with each other. John, yes, I believe that. But you started at a bigger rate, right, John? This girl's not that big. And there's another guy in our group also like in our fitness competition. He's not that big. You're not going to lose 30 pounds <laughs> in 30 days. No, Dominique, not planning ahead. <laughs> uh, let me see. There are so many comments that I missed. I apologize, y'all. I was just trying to give y'all um, the definitions Plus, I ain't got my glasses on, so I'm, like, squeezing in here to read this. He did. Yes, I saw it, John. I was like, John's good people. Oh, yes. Perfectionism is a way of procrastinating. Yes. It happens to everybody, but I've noticed lately I've getting a lot of phone calls where people are like, Erica, how do I defeat this? And I'm like... Let's get out a sheet of paper. Let's start writing down all the things that we're working on that we're good at. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is true, Journey to Jasmine. Very true. So, again, yes, this is something you're going to see. And, and, and I'm, I'm telling y'all this. We're doing a little subway break here. But I'm telling y'all this because I want you to understand, like, self-handicapping yourself, don't thinking you, like, there's a thing, um, what's her name, says all the time, you deserve wealth. You're worthy of wealth. Key, uh, you know, real estate, Kendra Barnes, you're worthy of wealth. Every time I see that, I would post it all the time because I think a lot of people are out here sabotaging themselves. And what happened is, and this is my little, less, I'll take a clip it out of this, Peter, when you see this. I told y'all, STEMI money businesses were ringing the bell for a lot of people for two years, but I had already been in business for four other years. So I know seasonality and I know when something's temporary and it won't last. And you have to be preparing yourself. You know, I kick myself now, but I mean, I spent over 100 bands over a course of three years of like masterminds and trainings and educating myself and learning how to pivot and do this and do this and turn that this past week, like just like, you know, it sounds crazy, but literally I put in like a, a put option or something on, on Tesla. I don't want to over explain it just because I had been in this guy's course a long time ago. And I even look at, I look back at it again. Right. I said, let me try. I said, Oh crap. We got some money off this. Oh crap. But old person, uh, imposter syndrome person, like, well, I need to study more and more and more and more and more. I need to make sure I'm accurate before I make any decision. And it's, it's not gambling if you've studied, 
you've prepared yourself and you're ready to pivot. A lot of these people that had STEMI money businesses, two things are happening. Three things are happening right now. One, they're spending ad spend on Instagram hard. They need to reach more people to hit their numbers. And that's fine. Number two, they're going to a speaking in person event model, right? A lot of people did virtual stuff and they still work because everybody ain't really ready to spend money and be in conference setting. But those conferences that I am seeing are being sold out, period, like sold out. Grant Cardone was sold out for real. And I mean, so many people here in Austin were like, oh, you're not going. I'm like, shit, I can't go. I didn't buy a ticket in time. They're like, you knew he would sell out. I was like, I thought he was lying like last year. Of course, Donald Trump showed up there. That's probably why it was probably sold out. But what you have to understand is <clears throat> the business models are going to have to change to do more in person. You know, you pay 5K in a day. It used to be 2K. I don't know. They go back and forth on a spell uh, on Grant Cardone's office. You can go visit the office for a day kind of thing. Right. Um, there's several other businesses starting to do that. Right. Coaches have been, you know, spending crazy level. 10K with them, if you can't show your students making money at some point in this journey in a two, three year window, it's a wrap. Prime example of what, four years ago at this point, almost three years ago, technically, when I started the trucking journey and all these people followed me and I told them, be careful. And I've even had people now come, they bought a truck for 30, let it run for three years. Their driver quit and they're like, you know what, I'm going to sell this truck. For 50. And I said, no way. They called him. He sure enough told me, show me his receipt where he sold the truck for like 48,000. Bought it for 30. Been running it for three years. Running his business and sold it. And he literally tagged me and hood states and was like, oh my God, thank you. This has been an amazing three years. Now I took this money, bought, uh, I think he invested in a house or something. He invested in a rental property and is out, out the game and going on about his next play. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see a bunch of people that two, three years ago, they took the tax lien stuff. They started working on it then. And they done, now they've got tax liens. We've got a, a, a testimony from Bernadette who had a tax lien in Alabama like five years ago on the channel. People, what you're going to see, if you're in the seller's position or if you're in the business owner position, you're going to have to get a little creative with your business this fall. For the second, third, fourth quarters, you're going to have to plan some more outdoor events. Again, I made it very clear. I'm going to do the boat party. I'm going to do the classy climb tour, like a big one in Houston. Uh, and then I'll probably go over to Africa with uh, DJ the Money Coach, right? People come with, come with, right? Uh, and I think like two masterminds um, in Mexico. I think something we have planned. But what's going to happen is people are wanting the more uh, like, okay, um, what happens is you and the reason I keep saying you guys have to start doing more, what these business owners learned in this two-year window of all this money coming in is a, a seasonal, like seasons. Like, okay, this much, this much. And when they see this big drop-off, they're like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? I, and I tell people, I'm like, the STEMI money going. If you didn't format your business to really have this community-driven base where they come and hang out and pay reoccurring money in the community, or they come to conferences once a quarter, or they come and do something, your business almost has to leave. Now, you can keep making sales. You can keep dripping lower amount of sales. But if you know anything about lifestyle creep or business creep, once you live very, when you get $100,000 a month, and then the next month's 20 k everybody you know is like, girl, that's 20 k Yeah. And you're like, but I used to make 100 so you have to learn there's levels to this and training yourself in advance gets you able to, to pivot. But you only learn that once you learn it. See, a lot of people are still in the, I'm going to just study and study some more mode. They never, they, they've been in Terry's class three, four years. They ain't never made a trade. They've been in other people's classes. They ain't never made a trade. They've been out here learning, learning, learning for three years. Ain't nothing happened. Three years is a long time and a short time. But what you're going to see, a lot of these people, this is why you're going to start seeing a lot more people into new development. Because the math don't make sense to go buy some of these wholesale deals that are basically fair market price. So some of these wholesalers are having a hard time. Some are doing well. But look at what the properties they show you they're doing well with. It's like hoarders is who they're still winning with. Okay. And grandma's house, somebody don't care about in the middle of nowhere. That's where they're winning. But if you notice, 
there's several folks in Houston, they're on a new development game now, right? Because that's where the math is. Like, buy up these land lots in the hood side of town and build up. Once you know the numbers, that's why I brought, brought Andy on the show. A lot of y'all are fighting imposter syndrome, but if you actually take steps and action in the direction of what you're trying to accomplish, you wouldn't feel like an imposter. So, um, Tara Jones, yep, congratulations. There's 225 people here. I know it's a little woo-woo, a little deep conversation tonight, but hit the like button and I'll try to um, get us up out of here. Listen, how does a man discipline his kids when he's only home once a month? You know, it's, it's a question. It's it's tough out here when you're debt free. That's when the big booty baddies try to come get you. We are not the same. That's my favorite saying, y'all. You have to stop worrying what people think about you. According to who? Let me tell you something. When somebody's like, oh, Erica, you fat, you just, you whatever. I had a weightlifting shirt on the other day. Rogue shirt. I got in the line. This man turned around and was like, oh, where do you lift? I was like, oh, well, I Go to Ghost Gym, right? I didn't have almost froze because I didn't know what to say. And then I realized, okay, this man is really flirting with me. Oh shit, right? And so what ends up happening is according to whom y'all got to get out of some of these rooms. April Mason's daughter, who has two kids, just got proposed the other day by an engineer out of Atlanta. And literally, they've been dating only 10 months. And people are like, oh, Erica, da, da, da. The man lost 100 pounds in the 10 months they've been dating. And literally in the proposal, he was saying like, you're the first woman to ask me about me and why do I like to do things and how I do this and that. And when he was saying it, I was like, damn, people really out here dating people not asking them no questions. <laughs> it's possible, right? And so, you know, according to whom they don't get married, single moms don't get married. According to whom black people don't get married, they're two black people. According to whom? They're in Atlanta, right? So, you know, nobody in Atlanta makes money. According to whom? He's an engineer in Atlanta. He's making engineer money. So, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where you're just like, according to who? Like, you can't let people take, like, according to my family, oh, I would never go to Africa. I would never go. Oh, God, Erica, why are you going to Africa? Uh, you need to have vaccines and all this stuff. You're going to get malaria. I come back, they're like, oh, where's the pictures? Send us some more pictures. <laughs> Right. And then I was like, I'm thinking about going to Istanbul, Turkey. Oh, don't go there. The Muslims, they're so aggressive. I'm like, y'all, they aggressive wherever they are. That's the culture. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, people will tell you not to do stuff that they've never done. And you have to internally go, you know, hey, that doesn't sound right to me. I know I'd be asking them for the likes. The likes are free. But they got to pretend like they came up with it on their own. You know, and you, you're going to have to add some new people to that circle. That's all that is. But that's, that, that's, that's what, it, in the past six years, the people who've come in and out of my life as seasons, oh my God, some of them I love them to death, will never hang out ever again. <laughs> like, I love them to death, I'll probably never see them again. Like, a person I know will always end up seeing often is Dre. Dre was here before all this. Dre introduced me to Boyce Watkins' channel. There's some people that came into my life before all this shit and they'll be here after the end of it. You know what I mean? Like they'll be here. So I'm not really worried. Well, I'm glad this is helpful. I mean, I'm just, I try to bring stuff on here. That's funny, engaging. I know to keep people here, you got to be funny, and engaging, but I'm also wanting some of y'all to get some breakthrough because it's like, if you can see most of my mornings, especially since I've been on antibiotics this past week, like I get up, listen to sermons, review, look at reports, make a plan for the year. And I was telling my mom, I was done. It was like three o'clock. She was like, oh, that must be nice. I'm like, yes, I built it. It's very nice. <laughs> but you have to realize you have to keep your guard up sometime on some conversation points. And now that my mom's running another business, she, she now sees what I was talking about. She's like, oh, man, these workers ain't coming in today. I'm like, they not? Say it ain't so. So a lot of times it's just people aren't in the same boat with you. Thank you, India. K8 for the 999 Super Chat. You forgot to put a comment in there. Thank you, Appliance Boot Camp Warehouse for 20K. Sorry, I'm just messing. $20. Y'all don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I'm struggling. I do not have my glasses on. Okay. I see some people buy the same course every year from the same course creator. 
The course creator just changes the name of the course, dude. And that's, that's literally, it's marketing. <laughs> like, I'm not even trying to be funny and I'm not trying to like dirty Mac other people's courses. Y'all literally see me struggle to put together good, course, like the struggle and like sit down and record with my ADHD ass and like put content into the classes. It takes time. And I understand why people don't, why they're, oh, here I have this new training, this new course, and it's really the same stuff. I literally know a wholesaler who's super wealthy off doing that. He had infomercials one time. Um, now he's back to like smaller circuit. Um, I don't know if you remember that guy who wrote the book, How Come That Rich, That Guy is a Rich Idiot or something like that. Robert Sherman. He's running YouTube ads and Instagram ads. I, I mean, the same old information works. It just depends on who's absorbing it. And a lot of times you have people out here, they'll buy the course. They really don't take advantage of it. I mean, they already told you, Nehemiah Davis was like, I think it's like 9% of people, no matter the cost of the course, finish courses. I've got courses that were $2,000 and I've got courses that are like $27. And people, I can see the timestamp from when people fall off. And I'm like, you need this information, not me. I'm the one already going to PNC Bank and a couple other banks this week. I'm not, that's you. I'm going to get approved. I gave you the information. If you're going to get approved, let me know. So, I mean, it just, it depends. Um, but a great way to bust imposter syndrome is by actually taking action and taking steps. The more you get into this side of doing, you can watch from a mile away somebody do some crazy mess. I mean, I watched one girl who was going through a scandal. She got pregnant not once, but twice. And everybody forgot about it. Jay Morrison out there putting out courses oh, and putting out YouTube ads and video ads and Instagram ads and interviewing big name people like Grant Cardone. It, it's all seasonal. People have the memory of a goldfish. Two months later, they'll be doing something else. So that's why I want you to understand a lot of these creators, they're fighting imposter syndrome. They don't went out and bought all these G-wagons and cars and bullshit to impress you. And now we at the crunch time. When the stimmy money ain't flowing, if you're smart, which a lot of us think we are, you would have segued into A, B, C, and D. Look at how many people tried to segue into something. Torino car apps, other vehicles, um, laundromats. There's even a laundromat conference, y'all. It's insane. Uh, pest control, all these different things. There's a ton of million things you can do once your mind is open, but you don't, you don't have to do them all, right? You just have to pick one to segue into. I told y'all, I have a client. She literally had a stroke and a heart attack. She's managing one truck. She got two right now or one? I think it's one. And that's because that's all she does all day is get up, make sure it has loads, do this, do paperwork. She's recovering better than someone else who had a stroke. Now, everybody's, you know, health issues are different, of course. But you have to understand when you start doing the work, nobody can take that from you. It's like muscle memory. It's like getting up every day. Okay, I need to get on this computer, do A, B, C, D, F, G. You know, I literally had to rewrite, stop being, Alex over here trying to hear me, stop being afraid, right? This guy's like, oh, I need to hire a VA. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm like, well, what do you do? I said, no, no, take me through it. Step one through 10. What do you do in a day? He froze. Oh, I got to think about it. I got to think about it. Get out a sheet of paper before we got on this phone call and write out the top things you do in a day instead of saying, I'm just so busy. I'm just so overloaded. Uh, people got to take this stuff off me. People will show up for a paycheck and not do their job. That's just the nature of people. So it's your job as a person creating this job. What's stressing you the hell out? Write it all down and give it to somebody else. Right. But we talked about that yesterday. What happened at Yale? So many administrators now have just almost veto power, unlimited power. That's weird stuff happens. Y'all, John, give John a clap right there. Uh-huh. 375 to 240. Um, truck prices are, yeah, they're insane. Right? I had one of our trucks was stolen, and then it went through auction in, in Lubbock, and they only paid nine grand for it, y'all. Almost lost it. Almost sued everybody in Lubbock. And they were like, Oh, this, 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 and this. And I was like, Do you know how much the value of trucks are? Get out of here. Um, we'll have the date soon. We're just still working out the last little bits with the Woodlands area. It's not even a truck driver shortage. Um, it's ineffectiveness. It's ineffective chaos. 
How do I feel about her? Man, no more Ukrainians. It, Dominique, I'm just telling you, it's it's people ain't paying attention. Internal work, yeah. Oh man. There you go. Listen, I paid eight thousand dollars for a course. Eighty percent of people don't use it. Listen, you I can go and call about four or five people who have courses and they will tell you every day, 90% of the people don't finish the class. Like I literally can go in here right now on my computer and see where like 10 people are like, oh, um, there's a video missing. There's a this missing. And I go, ma'am, there's over 12 hours of content in here. You did not watch 12 hours of content. You know how I know? I can go look in your activity log under your email and show you didn't even finish watching the videos that's already there. Oh, but the course is missing something. It don't matter what it's missing. Did you watch 12 hours of content? No? Okay, then. <laughs> it's just that simple, right? We have 300 people signed up for the Credit Spring course. I put out the replay, 30 people watch the replay. I know my numbers. Only 10% of people are really serious, like, I need to get this done. I need to get this fixed. I need to move forward. I know it. I've seen it too many times. That's how I know when I go to these conferences and these events, the people like Eric Coffey, who's been doing um, government contracts for 10 years. Oh boy, I bought on the channel that's been doing con government contracts for four years. It's the people that are steady and constant, come out the gate and just be constant. They win. But you got to learn that by doing. So many of you are like, I have an idea for a YouTube channel or a podcast or I'm thinking about coaching. I'm like, do it. That's how you get past this imposter syndrome. Let me see. Um, oh, Lord. Sorry. I'm stepping on toes. Hey, I'm, I'm trying. Just, I just want to shake some people up a little bit. So, I, My husband and I got married two years ago. I've been going to weddings and two black people three to four times each year. Yeah. And, and some of it's age, some of this. But, but a lot of times what you're hearing in some of these spaces are people who are 40 and 50 years old. You know what I'm saying? It, Nobody they know is getting married. You know what I'm saying? Um, for whatever reason. Why is that person sending me a picture? That's weird. Okay. And so they're in their 40s and 50s talking about they don't see nobody getting married. Well, baby, you old already. The people you see getting married are, are divorcees getting remarried. I've seen in the past couple of years a girl with four kids get married to a single dude with no kids who owns his own business. I've seen another chick. <laughs> Countless single moms getting engaged. Like, Y'all quit playing. Like, that's my whole point. According to whom? You're not a catch. You're not a beautiful. You're not attractive. According to whom? Get out of that room. Go into the next room, baby. Uh, old girl Ellie, you know, they were they're playing with her a little bit on the in an interview, if you saw it, because she had somebody on her screen cover. And they were like, oh, you got a man? She said, yeah, I thought nobody wanted to date me with four kids. And I'm like, according to whom? You're like six feet tall and, and a size six. Ain't nobody care about that. <laughs> and you're rich. Like, no matter how these people try to front, like, oh, I don't care about no money. And women don't give you their money. When that woman move you in that house, you care. Stop playing. People be playing too much out here. I'm sway. Done is better than perfect because perfect never gets done. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Okay, get it, Erica. I recently got coaching, and I was told I have done so much, and I need to stop caring about other people. I need to humanize people and keep living my journey. It was amazing. I'm telling you, if, I, if there's nothing else y'all got out of this video tonight, please get on a sheet of paper and write all the things you've done. The coolest thing when my grandparents were alive is like asking them, like, hey, how did this happen? How did y'all get down the road? You don't know how to drive a car. What happened? Well, this person used to come over and drive us. And go, just all these crazy wild stories, but you would never know them if you don't ask them. And I want, to ask, want you to ask them of yourself. They do. They, they want to have everybody be fear factor. Listen, I, I think I've done maybe six videos in a row <laughs> at this point on your family is not your key person. They're not your person buying stuff from you. They're not a person doing business with you. Right. And, and a lot of times when you get in partnerships, the other person's like, well, my part's more important than others. This is why you have to you got to like let you got to let some of that go and have metrics for what you're looking for. 
Oh, in Turkey. Okay, so perfect example. Perfect example. We're going to go right here. Every single week, all in our community slides, in our 15,000 e 15, people email list, we say, what do we say on the channel? Email admin at classyclimbers.com. You, did you check your spam? You don't get an activation code. We don't give activation codes here. So I don't, which course did you buy? What's your email? Again, all these things that you're asking me in the middle of a live show, you could simply go email admin, A-D-M-I-N-D, -D, at classyclimbers.com. And what you're going to do when you email them is don't say, I don't have access to my course. You're going to say, hey, I'm having problems logging in. I could just go on classyclimbers.com and type in my e forgot my password and get a new one sent to me. Any of these options. We don't send out activation codes here. You get a confirmation email, but you never get an activation code. So where are your emails going that no one's answering them? If you're not, if you're not emailing admin at classyclimbers.com, where are you emailing? Again, this is dirty macking. <laughs> that no one answers any emails and no one's, no one sent me my products and services. There's not a person out here who's worked with us who hasn't got their products and services. Because every week and every day we say, hey, email us at admin at classyclimbers.com if you're missing something. If you've forgotten a password, hit forgot password. If you're lo if you're missing anything, message us. See how that work? See how those work? It was, if that's not clear, put a two in the comments. If that was crystal clear what I just broke down, put a one in the comments. Okay? We don't give out activation codes here. <laughs> Thank you, Namara Buckner, for the $20 super cat <laughs> cash app. It doesn't, again, this is one of those according to whom. According to whom. Entrepreneurship is lonely if you feel like we're, you miss coming to work and we're all on the floor talking about the same stuff and goofing off while we're stocking shelves at Walmart. Yeah, that's not what's happening. Um, if you look at a, some of the best entrepreneurs, they build a really good office team and then they do they do quarterly whatever trips and events with that office team and then they're able to build their life. The problem the bad rep entrepreneurship gets is because people have a, they don't build systems. So then they're just businesses just running them and they're just running around. Y'all see, I make it a priority and a mission. Hey, we're going to do a massage on this day. We're going to do a facial on this day. We're going to go to our stretch zone appointment this day. We're going to do this this day. We're going to work on our trainer twice a week. Part of the two or three times when I've been to the doctor, they're like, man, look at your muscles. Blah, blah, blah. What you been doing? I'm like, working on my trainer, lifting the weights, right? You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's done by doing. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're feeling isolated, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do, what city and state are you in? Let's say it's real estate. What's going on in the RIA groups? Okay, outside of the RIA groups, what's going on in the next level groups? Outside of them groups, what's going on in the next level groups? You should have almost to the point where, hey, twice a month, Tuesday, Fridays, or whatever, two, two Thursdays out of the month, I go meet the local real estate folks at this event. Golf classics. My friend always pays money and goes to golf classics. About three hundred dollars, sometimes two fifty, sometimes less. It goes to charity. Most of the time, they put you on teams and you're laughing and talking with strangers, right? So a lot of times, it's how are you building out your personal life? See, again, this comes where I talk about you don't want to have Gary V's life. You don't want to grind, 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 grind. Are you hustling? Like, no, no, we don't want that. That's not living, okay? I want to live my life, and if I come here and I choose at 8 o'clock to do a live and then go on home because the rest of the videos for the rest of the week are already pre-recorded, I can do that. I can do that. And it doesn't, it doesn't mess up anything. I don't have kids waiting at daycare. I don't have some situation that's a fire. I got to go put it out. Again, it, how are you building your outside life? Yep. Yeah. Mark should be going. Erica, you were from NC. If you can survive it, you can survive it. Girl, NC is 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 a hush puppy. Girl, now if you said South Carolina, I'd be like, that's a gutter. But NC, man, you can go to NC and live a very average life and be doing well. The problem you have right now is all these people come from up north and come to NC and they start investing, right? Like I'm talking about buying up whole little towns, little old shops, and people are like, oh, these people coming down here carpet bagging in North Carolina. 
I go, Asheville, North Carolina wouldn't even be the way it is right now if it wasn't for about 20 gay people that came from New York in the 80s and opened up all the stuff downtown in Nashville. Asheville, North Carolina was a dead zone. Like everybody got ghosts. It almost was to the level of a ghost town until a bunch of gay people. And I'm just describing it because that's how that's why it has the city has the bend it has now. They came from New York and they were like, hey, we can make this a beautiful retreat. A play, we do all this stuff and we can make it gay friendly. And they were like, oh, yes, we can do this. And so it became a hub. You know what I'm saying? And so now this Asheville is this beautiful mecca of this place, but it's because people came down and invested. So facts. Uh, I had to release one of my best friends from college, and it was like it was more fuel for the jet stream. People are for reasons and see, honey. You got to let some people go. They'll 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 be on the same pony, and that, that's why I used to love Joyce Meyer. I used to love her. She had that book, Battlefield of the Mind. That's like the number one selling book because it's all up here. It's all up here. It's all up here. And you'll have like you know that she always uses the the people in the desert, Moses and the people in the desert. They were out there for forty years for a trip, which technically we could walk right now in two weeks, two three weeks across the desert. We'd be hot, but we could walk it. And it wasn't they were in the desert for 40 years because they couldn't walk fast enough to get to where they need to go. It's because their mindsets. They're going to keep going around that same mountain, that same conversation forever and ever and ever for 40 years. You meet people like that. You know, I thought about writing a book, girl. Oh, when did you think about writing it? About 10 years ago, girl. I'm like, you could have wrote a page a day and had three books by now, right? So some of these things are... These are, things are solved by doing, right? I'm going to read the last little thing here. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate you. You do have to go watch stuff twice sometimes. That's really crazy, John. And you know, here's the crazy part, John. There's a man selling a course that to me is worth $3,000. He's selling it for like one seventy four, dollars And people be haggling him. And I'm like, this course is worth Three thousand dollars. Once he just showed you this little trick and this other stuff in the back, I'm like, y'all, this man then showed you everything you needed to do. Three five tries. And hey, listen. After that, you asking for a headache. Thank you. Welcome to the YouTube channel, member. See, look, look, there you go. Jacob just said that for Dr. Dr. Dix. If you're in the chat, which I see you are, screenshot this. I'm going to take a picture of my screen. But I just want y'all to understand, this is, this is real life. Let me take my flash off. Try to blind y'all. There you go. Made the move from warehouse worker to developer at my company because of automation videos with Dr. Dix. Guess who just got a robot to pick cases in the warehouse? Close one. Oh, yeah. Listen, y'all. Automation. We'll have Dr. Dix back on. We both line up our time. Listen. Facts. I get an email from Classy Climb every Sunday on my progress. And this is something inside Think of it, that we are trying to turn it off. And people are like, I get an email every week, Erica. And I'm like, do the work. Just go in, complete, click, finish, and be done. <laughs> it's going to send you an email forever. Because <laughs> that's how think of them is. It's going to be like, you only completed 50% of your course. Right? Inside of the rise of 20%, we've got 45 different dingone speakers in there on business and credit and real estate and money and starting stuff. And it's that's just how I know people, they'll let it go by. There you go. Congratulations. I mean, that's for real. According to who? They are. They are. Thank you. Got married at 52 after 30 years of single mom. Congratulations. <laughs> M-Sway, he's like, I wasn't referring to him. Hey, you guys, let's not. We're not going to do no, no slander. Um, the courses are on the side. I gotta do is log in. I mean, that's you know, <laughs> a 
Listen, careful in other countries. They be doing whatever. Hey, Shay, listen, it happens to the best of us. Listen, I appreciate y'all trying to help in the in the chat. I mean, I, I appreciate it. I get a weekly progress report. Yeah, just email us because there has been some students who went through our um, our other automation system. It may have missed you in the gap, but I will always make sure you have whatever you need if you email Enrique because he literally emails me sometime at midnight. Like, this person had this. I'm like, Enrique, it's midnight. I don't care. <laughs> but I realize they're up over there. For sure. Um, is it just Tuesdays you're open? Because, you know, the schedule for the next couple months is going to be crazy. I'm not even certain. No, no, no. You're fine. I appreciate you super chatting, though. Right? Because I'd be like, you know, I just want to if we send out surveys often to see what we're missing, how we're missing folks, what's going on in the business. And so I'd be like, y'all, I send emails all the time. Like, how many more emails do y'all want? But I'll send more. Thank you, Dr. Dix. And again, Dr. Dix did a great video on automation. We'll, I'll share it on the community wall tomorrow. Learn by doing. Even tattoo artists are making money off Will Smith and Chris Rock. Several people got tattoos of the infamous slack. He did it because he was a Will Smith fan. Fan scan make you and other people money. Fan scam? I don't know. It makes a lot of people money. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Go ahead and email us. Email us and we'll check to make sure you're not lost in the shuffle. Gratitude is a major key because of the mindset. Yeah. And for no reason. He's not a truck driver. He works in an office. <laughs> I know I, I couldn't take it I couldn't take it yeah the only thing there was the Biltmore you have to realize these old drip down experiences for Asheville and a lot of places where the wealthy family in town had the power plant the whatever plant and they bought jobs and then the town money trickled between each other that is still how it works in a lot of places listen Skynet hates it Skynet hates it Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, I don't have, we don't have the page turned on for it yet. I know. <laughs> That's why I'll be like, y'all, I promise you. Jump in the boards, abundance board picks. You gotta, you gotta really, you gotta take care of it. Okay, so let me finish this last thing and we'll close it out because we're running at 58 minutes and I know it's a lot. Who is that? Okay, I'll look it up later. Y'all, people be blowing this phone up. Okay, perfectionism. Now, this is, you're not sure perfectionism replies to you. Have you ever been accused of being a micromanager? Do you have great difficulty delegating? Even when you're able to do so, do you feel frustrated and disappointed in the results? When you miss the insanely high mark on something, do you accuse yourself of not being cut off? All right? Do you feel like your work must be 100% perfect of the time? These are the signs of a perfectionist. Now, again, you know, they talk about, you know, owning and celebrating your achievements to, to avoid burnout and find contentment and cultivate self-confidence. That's what they want you to do. Okay. Truth is, it'll never be perfect. All right. The superwoman slash superman. Do you stay later in the office than the rest of your team, even past the point that you completed that day's necessary work? Do you get stressed when you're not working and find downtime completely wasteful? That's sad. Have you left your hobbies and passions fall by the wayside, sacrificed to work? Do you feel like you haven't truly earned your title, so you feel pressed to work harder and longer than those around you to prove your worth? Imposter workaholics are actually addicted to the validation that comes from working. And work itself. So here's my thing. Um, it, it, in the article, it tells you to start training yourself for outside validation, right? Which you got to be careful. 
Um, the dude who built Zappos was a workaholic for a long time. Sold Zappos, and in that next five years, he died in a weird fire and a drug addict. You have to balance. The saddest thing is when I run into people, and and unfortunately, this is more men than women. Um, from the calls and from my friends who are here in engineering, they got guys at work that are forty. I'm like, well, well, I got money now. Where where's all my friends? Where's all my stuff? And this magical thought, like when I get the money then I'll have all this. If you aren't crafting and building a life, no. You'll get the money and there won't be nobody there. This is a real thing. People are are overworking themselves. There's nothing. And when y'all watch this channel, I want y'all to understand. When you saw my early videos, motivation, and trying to do stuff, like I was working two and three jobs, carving out a direction of like, okay, I won't be doing this in a year from now. I'll do this, 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 this. I'll invest more. You cannot, um, you only learn by doing, right? When you learn, okay, that's too much. That's too stressful. Let's do this. Now you can pull it back. Because there's some people in here like, Erica, I love the work. I'm not saying work is bad. There is dignity in work. There's a whole series on that. They show you when people don't work, what happens to them, all this other stuff. This is the reason they have all those prisoners working in the farms of Angola, which I know it sounds terrible, but they do. Because they're sitting in a hot ass Louisiana swamp, burning up all day. They're just gonna fight and kill each other all day. That's all they're gonna do there. So they're on a farm that used to be a plantation. That's what they're doing. They put giving them something to do every day. It sounds crazy, but that's what they do. So again, uh, there's several books on this about if you give somebody a, like um, and what I love about the four hour workbook, four hour work week book, it was like if you had a heart attack next week. And you had to reduce your work by like two hours, a, two hours a week, four hours a week, two days a week. Could you do it? All right. There's a video of me and Kareem. It's literally three days after I had surgery. And y'all can't see in the pillow, but I'm like sitting on a pillow. And my mom's like in the hotel room like, are you doing a video? Right now? And I'm like, I am. <laughs> like, I had to th- like, that's enough. We're good. Like, y'all don't understand. I'm 180 degrees the other way now. I'm like, y'all can have all that overworking yourself anyway natural genius okay so this one uh is are you used to excelling without much effort okay do you have a track record of getting straight a's or golden stars in everything you do were you frequently told as a towel you were the smart one in the family or pre-agree do you dislike the idea of having a mentor because you can handle things on your own this is key when you faced with a setback, does your confidence tumble because of not performing well provokes a feeling of shame? Do you often evolve challenges because it's uncomfortable to try something you're not great at? Again, the, it, every every answer in this is what I've been telling y'all. To move past this, try seeing yourself as a work in progress. You know what I mean? Like, again, a lot of these are telling you to go do something. Okay. Um, It's okay to be independent, but not to the extent that you refuse assistance so you can prove your work. And this is a soloist. Okay. Do you firmly feel that you need to accomplish things on your own? I don't need anyone's help. Does that sound like you? Do you frame requests in terms of requirements of the project rather than your needs as a person? Put that PTO on time. Put that time in. You're going to go on your break. There's no shame in asking for help if you need it. If you don't know something, ask a coworker. If you can't figure out how to solve a problem, seek advice from a supportive supervisor or a career coach. Okay. Number five, the expert. Experts, I'm being careful. Experts measure their competence based on what and how much they know or can do, believing they will never know enough. They fear being exposed as inexperienced or unknowledgeable. Do you shy away from applying for job postings unless you meet every single educational requirement? Audience, when we bring on people for Tech Tuesday, okay, y'all wear me out with that. Are you constantly seeking out trainings or certifications because you think you need to improve your skills in order to succeed? I've been a a victim of that back in the past. I've calmed down. Even if you've been in a role for some time, can you relate to the feeling like you don't know enough? Listen to me, y'all. I started doing those Tech Tuesdays. I would ask my tech friends here who make $180,000 a year in tech and up. And they didn't know some of the stuff I brought up from Kamoy and these people. They are who? 
He's like, yeah, we got tech writers at a job, but I don't know their job. I could ask somebody. Like literally people in tech don't even know. So in the community wall, when I post stuff about tech, you got people in here being sour asses like, it's hard. It's competitive. I wish you stopped marketing this, Erica. Stop telling people this. That is the worst, right? Because it's someone who's in the industry. Instead of saying, we need more competent people in the industry, they're immediately like, it's hard. Don't do it. It's terrible. I wish you stopped marketing this. Like, what is wrong with y'all? It's fucking sick, dude. That's sick. That's some figure out why you're being that way mentally. Really do. And they'd be like, well, I'm just trying to educate people. They'll literally be in my comments. Like, I'm just trying to educate people. It's not that easy. You already got people who are in here fear pissing their pants because I'm 41 or I'm 42 or I'm 43. Am I too old for tech? I'd be like, no. Can you still work a computer? Do your fingers work? Can you do it? Can you pick up a phone? You got this, girl. Like, come on, quit playing. There are several people who are old 80-year-old nurses and 80-year-old tech people because you can't put you out as long as you're doing the work. Do you shudder when someone says you're an expert? I mean, this, this happens to people. Long story short, it says mentoring junior colleagues or volunteering may be a great way to discover your inner expert. When you share what you know, not only does it benefit others, it also helps heal your fraudulent feelings. So a lot of you who are in my coaching classes and I'm like, hey, put your one plagiar out. Let's get this going. Let's get out here. People are like, oh, I'm like, go help some people. Shoot, go, go do a free, free freebies. And then when you build your confidence back up, let's try again. Because, because I'm telling you, there's people who have coaching ability, but they're scared to step out to it. So hope this was helpful. This is called the Muse Advice, uh, five different types of imposter syndrome, and five ways to battle it. Y'all can look it up on your own, and then I'll see your last minute, last little comments, and we'll close it on out. It is. Master IT, thank you for the $20 super chat. I'm realizing grinding culture is BS. Yes, you need to work hard. You also need to live a life worth living. I'm telling you, I'm my friends who work in tech are like a bunch of 40-year-old dudes are around me, and they're pissed because they're like, I thought when I had all this money in a house, like women would be all over me. And he was like, who told you that? <laughs> Like he would like almost laugh in their face, like who told you that? Nobody. That's not true. So again, it's 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 according to who, y'all. According to who? Let me see here. I get notifications thirty minutes early for my computer and phone, and iPad. I have YouTube Premiere, so I don't know if that makes a difference. That may be what it is. Sometimes these articles be doing it. This is me. I work three home three work from home jobs. I really don't have anything to prove for anybody. Jay White, book that vacation. Book it, book it. Oh, send the link to sick video. It's where I did the first interview, I think a second interview with Kareem Baldwin. And my mom was just like, Are you out here recording? I'm telling y'all. I I tried to study the past three weeks off and on, you know, this whole come back from Africa foot infection body about to break down on me uh, all kind of craziness and I still was studying and I started studying and I'm telling y'all master at IT he, I, I will promote, promote him heavy he is good at what he does and when you start hearing some of these topics you'll be like I can do this I can take this test tomorrow I just said I'm all the types I'm sorry Look, I'm in tech without a single certification and leveraging the pay increase to get a certification and other ventures. Just get up and do something. I'm telling you, man. Listen, ain't nothing that I could tell y'all. Listen, that right there is a testimonial <laughs> for tech. I, I mean, I really think y'all are overthinking a lot of this stuff. But what I see happening, and, and, and this is my short breakdown, close it up. People are like, man, it's getting hard to sell these classes, Erica. What's going on, you know? And I'm in a several groups where people are saying that. And I go, all right, so here's a couple of things. You can promote more. You can buy more ad space on Instagram. There's always going to be people every day who don't know you. Um, you can promote more on YouTube, okay? There's always going to be new people that don't know you. Brand new to you today. Uh, number two, <laughs> grow and culture your communities, your community groups, right? Get in there, work with them, talk with them you know, plan mastermind, little small masterminds. Like there's two or three little masterminds I want to do while I'm in Tampa. 
you know, there's a lot of little stuff that you can do to kind of foster and grow and create your business better. Um, but it's going to require doing, right? Uh, this is something people don't really understand. Like, it was easy two years ago. From 2020 to now, to about, I'd say July last year, was easy money. If you were in social media, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, it was easy money. Now it's going to be real money. Now you got to really provide the value. Now you really got to do the, the deal. You really got to follow up. You really got to like, you know you're valuable. You know your courses and products are valuable. But you really got to realize there's a whole batch of people that's going to go back to work and be like, shit, I wasted my time. I got to buy a course to get the information I don't know to get me up out of here. There's a reason I swung to Tech Tuesdays because I know those people on there at some point, some people are going to do all these little hustles and go, you know what? I just need a, better, a higher paying job. Let me go get some skills. That's that's what's going to happen out here. A lot of that. Oh, let me get some. I better go. I better go to school. I better go do something. Automation going to kick their butt. It just is what it is. So if you're a business owner and you know that. And you literally can can get that around your mind. You can go ahead and calm down and plan your year. Calm down. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be like 2020. It's not gonna be like 2021. This year is gonna be much slower. It's gonna be registered down. That's why I did that whole series on credit. Did a whole like get your get your stuff together. Get your funding together. Get out as much as you can. You're gonna see people do new construction, right? Four or five months, they sell the house, walk off with 100k. I'm just, I want you to understand. So anyway, let me see this last couple comments here. Legit testimony I heard about tech sales and Erica's channel. There you go. There you go. I'll go ahead and screenshot that again. Y'all don't understand, like, people really be on the fence and they'll, and they'll be like, man, thank you for posting this or that. So, so I'm doing it. Mr. YouTube train, what's reasonable? Do you understand? Do you understand these people are charging a thousand, two thousand dollars for boot camps because you're gonna walk away and make hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Like, what's reasonable for making hundred and fifty thousand dollars? What's reasonable for making hundred and twenty thousand dollars? Do you know what I'm saying? Like at some point we have to we have to ask, assess to ourselves. I bring on Tech Tuesday women in Linux. You can train with them for free. At some point, it's gonna cost you. It's going to cost you time or money. It's It, it really is that simple, y'all. It's going to cost you time or it's going to cost you money. And once you figure it out, because you want to do it all yourself, and uh, you're going to be like, oh, that was a waste. Let me go do this. The other day, I think Todd Miller somebody sent me a message. Hey, how'd you design that? I don't know. I just paid a kid to go do it. <laughs> I don't have time to be deep diving into Canva all day. I don't. And I don't make time. I really don't. So... Um, again, thank you guys, everybody who supports the channel, everybody who watched. Thank you, Master IT. Let me tell y'all, it's a new year, new things. Please break out of your imposter syndrome for yourself and for your own mental health. And um, this is your girl, Erica, Classic Line Blog. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for uh, supporting the channel and, and all that we've done. And I appreciate you. So have a wonderful evening.